of Footprints. I'm your host, Mr. Davis. I'm an educator at BHS, and with me today is a senior from BHS, my guy, Alan Dang. And uh, we're going to start off right away, Alan, um, just by jumping right in, because I remember when you were a freshman, and that was yeah. four years ago, and now you're a senior, and you've been through the halls of BHS, and now you're ready to graduate and do some things. So before you do that, though, I want to ask you a question. What's one fun fact that no one knows about you? About me? Mm -hmm. I seem very diligent, but in truth, I'm pretty lazy as a person. <laughs> in all honesty, I'm pretty you, lazy. You're lazy? In a way, yeah. I can't see that. I, I tend to slack on some things. I can't. I, I definitely can't see that. Um, but that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Uh, one fun fact about Mr. Davis. I am one of four. And uh, I have two brothers and a sister. And um, my older brother, well, put it this way. My dad was 6'3". My older brother is 6'2". My... Younger brother is 6'5", and Mr. Davis is 5'8". So go figure. They used to call me the, the milkman's kid. So well, here I am, right? Yeah. That's how it goes down. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, though. Um, how many siblings do you have? Um, in total, I have six siblings. Six? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm and where uh, do you fall in that? that? I'm, I'm in the uh, lower middle child. Okay. So I'm the, the fourth one born out of the six. Okay. So, and you... you you, did you grow up here in Beverly or? So, tell funny us a little story. bit about that. Um, when I was younger, my parents had three children before me, obviously, mm -hmm. two brothers and my sister. Okay. Um, they were first generation immigrants over in the US. So, I was bounced around with like aunts around the US. Um, I was sent to Vietnam with my grandparents for them to take care of me. Ooh. So, I, my first language learned was Vietnam because I was with my grandparents primarily. And my aunts and uncles were also first generation. So, Wow. They, they primarily spoke that language around me. That is interesting. Interesting story. Wow, I like that. So having gone through that, those footprints that were left on you as a kid, you carried those with you from country to country, and now here you are in Beverly, Massachusetts, about yeah. to carry some more footprints forward, which we love. Oh, yeah. Which is a good thing. Um, let me ask you a little bit about your personal growth as a, as a high school student, because I think everybody grows in their individual ways. So what has been really your most memorable moment during high school, would you say? My most memorable moment during high school? Mm -hmm. um, it really have to start with like, just, it, it's not really about anything academic, it's more like the people that I've met throughout high school. Okay. Um, uh, the people I've met throughout freshman year, sophomore year, junior, they may be the same people, but overall I've seen them change in many ways okay um, all right you know i used to have some really good friends during freshman year and now in senior year they're just either not around anymore or they're just completely different people it's interesting because i always say people come into your lives for a certain reason and sometimes just a certain amount of time and then you know either they're there to teach us a little bit of a lesson or guide us on our path or our journey wherever it is we're going to be going to um so that's really interesting that you start with a bunch of kids and then all of a sudden you kind of get to high school and you start to go your separate ways. You get into your own little thing and they, they do their own little thing. Sometimes you come back together afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's interesting that that happens. Tell me about some challenges you've had as a high school senior and, and how you've overcome those and really kind of how they shaped you and the person you are. In, in a way, like, I used to be getting amazing grades back in middle school. I used to be really, like, you know, on top of everything. Mm -hmm. But over time, like, I, I started in a way, like, humbled myself and like started realizing like, yeah, I, I really got to put in the effort if I want to get the outcome that I want to get okay. for my, my grades and whatnot. Um, and, and it's sometimes going back to friends that have changed over time, I also have changed. Uh, some people I've had to cut off because they were, it influenced me in the worst way possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's funny that we talk a little bit about that in class today. Um, we talk a little bit about empathy and and fairness and moral compass and being able to know right from wrong and then making a good judgment and then talking about our conscience and, and what is our conscience going to say to us when we come to that point where we have to make a decision. Um, so those are really important things, right? And it's good that you have a moral compass, 
you know, empathetic for other folks, which is really awesome. Um, so what's one thing you wish you knew as a freshman that you now know now as a senior? Um, what I really wish I knew as a freshman is just to, you know, hang on to the people closest to you that you know will, like, stay with you at all times. And just academically, you know, be great friends with teachers. They'll help you out in the long run. Mm -hmm. Like, I've had teachers from freshman year that um, I've stayed around with or I've had multiple teachers repeatedly. Um, they learn to know me well. Uh, a great example is my English teacher. She's known me since, like, sophomore year and knew about me really well, helped me out with my college essay. Mm -hmm. So just staying around, like, the people that, like, connections are stronger. You know, for sure. And those, those really matter because once you stay around those folks, they influence you. Those are the footprints that they're putting on you so that you can take those and carry those forward into the world, which we love. Um, so what teacher or which class really influenced you the most? Who's your, like, basically, who are your favorite teachers in the school? Favorite teacher's got to be Mrs. Pratt, my math teacher. Mm -hmm. She, so, like, during sophomore year, it was really a fall-off time for me mm -hmm. where I'd, like, show up late or, like, I couldn't stay awake during class. <laughs> but it, it, it was pretty funny. But um, she was always there to support me. Mm -hmm. um, she always, like, helped me out, like, if I stayed after, talked to her or whatnot. Um, she... She also, funnily enough, she brought like uh, granola bars and just kind of kept it in her closet. She's like, anytime you want it, just come on by, just to like just see me, and make sure I'm all right. Wow. Like, she, see. She's she's been there to always really like make sure I'm all right. Well, you know, I being really being a that. teacher is more than just teaching the content and the curriculum, right, in the classroom. And when you get teachers like that who actually care about you, it's it's really important to to have that 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 balance, right? I love that too because I had a a seventh grade sewing teacher or a home economics teacher that did the same for me that opened my eyes to certain things, right? And it was nice that she was always there for me, not just as a teacher teaching the curriculum, but hey, listen, do you need anything? Uh, are you okay? And you know, always, that's, that's really, really important. Um, let's talk about future plans. Oh yeah. Let's, let's think about that. So now that you're, you're leaving the halls of BHS, no longer a, a, a Beverly High School student, um, what are you planning on doing with yourself, sir? In, my, in the future, yeah. I really want to shoot to get into a college for sure. I'm, I've honestly moved around on the things that I've been interested in and different, like, different hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I got into like, motorcycles and working on like, bikes, repairing them and whatnot. Um, the current place I work at, it's honestly great for uh, experience. It's like a, like a nice internship where I get paid. Um, I really want to get into like working on cars, even like like aerospace as an engineer. Mm -hmm. That's what I really want to get into. I like it. So now you mentioned motorcycles. Yeah. Tell me about you. Do you have a motorcycle collection? Oh, I have a few. All right. Tell me about that. So I've got a a bike made for track strictly. Um, I fully built it myself. Uh, I bought it pretty pretty much for cheap on a marketplace, and um, I built it myself. It runs great. I have another bike that, you know, I bought for cheap. It was off a guy. It was a little sketchy. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a clean bike, but, um, you know, it had a lot of issues mm -hmm. coming in with it for the price that I paid for it. I, uh, I spent many, many countless nights staying up late to fix it. You know, dealt, some pro dealt with some real problems where it just, you know, some screws just didn't come out because they were just <laughs> super tight. Okay. But, I love it. I love it. So you found something that you're passionate about. Very. And you decided, hey, look, I'm going to go pursue this. I'm going to do something in that that area. You ever think about maybe starting your own motorcycle shop, maybe, you know, repairing and selling them, or maybe housing them or anything like that? Dude, um, honestly, there's a lot of cool things I've th been thinking about, like setting up like a winter storage, because most people around the New England area, you know, with the snow, mm -hmm. they aren't able to keep it outside. Or some mm -hmm. people they just don't have garages or a storage area. So... You know, investing into a warehouse type of business for strictly for motorcycles uh, to maintain them because it's really particular how you um, you keep them stored, mm -hmm. um, just so they don't, you know, become ruined. If you leave it on the kickstand, one side of the tire is going to be flat if you just don't ride it for a while. The battery could die over time. Um, the feel will go bad. Okay. There's a lot of things where you have to think about it, which some companies they just don't do. <laughs> That's true. So now, if money were no object, what? type of motorcycle would you purchase? 
I would responsibly go for like a CBR. You said responsibly. A CBR <laughs> Fireblade. Because I know if I were to go for like some crazy fast bike, I won't be around. <laughs> okay. I won't be around. So I'll be that's, that's good. You know your limitations, right? Yeah. So you know yourself. That's, uh, that's the first self-awareness is the first part of knowing my limitations and what I can do and what I can't do. And that's pretty awesome. Um, so now what excites you most basically about the next chapter of your life? What, what's the most exciting part of, of, of what's next for you? I think the most exciting part about the next chapter in my life is I want to know once, you know, I graduate, what people stay, will stay around me still, what will I really pursue in the future? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what people will I, will I meet in the future? Because I, I feel about, I feel like life is all about, not about what you know, it's about who you know, oh, and who you sure. will know. For sure. Well, it's funny that you said that because one of the things that I love to do, right, I'm a DJ. And okay. so Mr. Davis actually, well, shameless plug, I, uh, I DJed the, uh, the homecoming on Saturday night at the BHS cafeteria, and that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing that. And I've been doing that since high school. So I used that little vehicle and that passion to do it. You know, I was on the radio station in high school, radio station in college, did some stuff now for like Kiss 108 and like Jamming 94.5 and all those different radio stations. And, and now I was like uh, on the air for WILD way back in the day. So I did a whole bunch of stuff like that and I kept that passion and I just kept moving it forward. So, and the footprint that was, printed on me by my parents because they love music. They used to play music in the house and I loved it too, like all the old James Brown and Aretha Franklin and all that stuff. So when you find a passion like you did with motorcycles, that is awesome. That's what you want to do. You want to be able to just carry that forward. All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about some life skills because I think going to the Beverly High School is such a huge melting pot of students we're able to really kind of balance not only academics, but being also like, you know, cordial with everybody, right? So tell me a little bit about what piece of advice would you have given yourself as a freshman, right, coming in and now leaving as a senior, what piece of advice would you give yourself? Like, so you're coming in as an incoming freshman, you don't really know much. What piece of advice would you give yourself? The best piece of advice I can give myself is to just, not bring myself down over one thing. Because mm. the one thing my, my teachers have always told me if I did bad is like, don't think too heavily about one bad grade, whether it be a formative or a summative, because you have four years to improve that. You have four years to work on it. Mm -hmm. And everything can change. Oh, for sure. I mean, things change so quickly, you know, in life. And the thing is, my parents always said, you get out of it what you put into it. So if you are gonna really invest in yourself and go ahead and like, I, I gotta get this grade up, I gotta get this grade up. Like some students wait and then they have to go to summer school and that's another story, but you know, investing in yourself right away and getting those grades is really a good, a cool thing. Um, what piece of advice would you give to students that are freshmen entering now the high school? What would you give, to, what would you tell them as a, uh, they're coming in as an incoming freshman and you're leaving as a senior. What, what would you tell them about the experience you've had at BHS? Not just the experience as BHS, but as like a student in high school. Mm -hmm. Just be yourself, be happy, uh, you know, make friends. Don't make too many friends sometimes. Because, <laughs> um, you know, you might become sad if they just, you know, they change and whatnot. Right. But like, be yourself. Enjoy the enjoy school, mm -hmm. and you know. Well, it's funny you said be yourself because some kids, they don't do that when they get to high school, right? That's true. They kind of fall into a crowd and they're just kind of going along with the crowd, right? But my dad always said, forge your own path, right? Go your own way, and that way you can create your own legacy, and people will respect you for just being you and being authentic. And that's kind of one of the most important aspects I can give advice as an educator to, to, to kids coming in, is don't, don't worry about the small stuff, right? That's what my parents used to say too, don't sweat the small mm -hmm. stuff, worry about it. Because those things will all work out, even themselves out in the end, which we really love. Um, what is the, the 
biggest single accomplishment you're most proud of as a high school senior leaving BHS? I think my most proud accomplishment mm -hmm. is just, I gotta really think about that. Um, my proudest accomplishment has probably been really learning who I am mm. from being in high school and just learning what I'm really capable of, what what I'm really passionate about, mm -hmm. um, and just like really understanding how well I can stay as myself without you know joining another crowd like you said before. Yeah. Um, just, you know, stay being me. Just being you. Being me. So and that who I am. That, that listen, that right there is is the ultimate. When you can be yourself and people accept you for who you are, you're right. Good, bad, or indifferent. That means you're leaving a footprint on them, right? And they're also going to leave one on you. And now you take it and you decide what I'm going to do with it, right? Which is really kind of cool. Now, if you could go back in time to a freshman, right? Or maybe a sophomore, whatever it is. If you can go back in time, what would you do differently? Soft. And if so, what is it? <laughs> would you oh, do anything differently? For sophomore year, I'd honestly really just tell myself to just cut the people out that, I, that you know, in your personal life and just mm -hmm. focus on school. Because in my sophomore year, I, I really got myself into my own mental limbo of just like not being demotivated, not like being motivated over academics. And that would also lead me to not being able to sleep properly, not being able to sleep properly. Like I said before with math, uh, with Ms. Pratt, I wouldn't show up to class on mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. show up late. And that, it, it really just, overall brought myself down. Okay. Um, if I were, yeah, definitely if I was able to go back to sophomore year, I would really just change who I've met during those times. Okay. So now let's think about that for a second. There's all kinds of clubs at BHS you can be involved in. Mr. Yeah. Davis and, and Mr. Pittman were both advisors to the Alliance of Students of Color. I'm also the advisor for the podcast club, right? So you can join a bunch of things. Now, if, if you can create any club in the school you wanted, what would it be? So honestly, when I came into high school, it was during an important time where uh, COVID was uh, apparent. I would definitely have started some sort of club around like the uh, like uh, anti-Asian discrimination because mm. that was a huge thing uh, when COVID was around. Yeah. Uh, like jokingly or not, people would definitely make uh, comments about, uh, oh, w watch out, he's gonna spread the virus or whatnot. Right, right, no doubt. So people just misinformed, right? Yeah. And sometimes when they're misinformed, they, they form their own opinions about things. And sometimes they're fearful of things they don't know, yeah. right? Believe me, I've been there, right? I remember when I was a kid, segregation was huge. So people didn't want me in their schools because of the color of my skin. They didn't think, oh, this guy's as smart as me, right? They didn't see that. They just saw the, the color. So a lot of times people make those judgments about you, right? And uh, well, as, as they say, you can't judge a book by its cover, because you just never know once you get into the book what it's going to be like, right? So that's, I think, the thing that, that people don't understand. Uh, some people some people are good at it, but others aren't. Um, you cannot judge someone just by the, their appearance and their looks, right? My parents always used to say, I don't care what color your friend is, as long as he's got good moral character and he's, he's got good core values like you, we're good with that. And that's one of the biggest things that I always took away my parents were always inclusive of everybody, no matter what was going on. Um, and, I, and I was raised in a time where segregation and desegregation, all this stuff was, was, was huge, right? But we, we fought through it, and now here we are in this huge melting pot here in Beverly. You're sitting here from Vietnam, and now you're going to be a graduating senior from, from Beverly High School. I'm sitting here from, uh, I came from Cameroon, folks. Um, and, and now I'm here as a educator at Beverly High School. So my path was set a long time ago, and so was yours. And now we've culminated to the, to the point where we're both here together, and we can talk about the footprints that were left on us and how we're carrying those forward and trying to make the world a better place. Because yeah. that's really what it's about, you know what I mean, is doing that thing. Um, tell me about the hobbies besides motorcycles. Do you have any other hobbies that you'd like to do? I've uh, definitely gotten to photography recent, like uh, in the last few years. Um, shout out to my friend Truman. Uh, he's he's gotten me into a lot of uh, unique hobbies. Okay. Um, okay. 
All right. Yeah, have you this. have you actually purchased a camera and gone out and done any of that stuff? I do have plenty of cameras, actually. <laughs> I have a uh, Sony a7 IV and a okay. Canon R50, both used for uh, photography. I okay. normally just go out, you know, um, during my sophomore year and junior year, I didn't work as much, so I had a lot of spare time to just go out. And uh, I would just go around Boston and just take photos. Take photos? Yeah. Sweet. Like, of, like, sunrises and sunsets or Sunrise, just sunsets, different, like, uh, architecture and stuff like that? Yeah. Landscape. How great is that? Everything. That's awesome. All right? So what, what piqued your interest to do that? What, what was the thing that really sparked it? It was really just kind of a sense of just, like, you know, being out alone, just, you know, just trying to enjoy my time alone. It, it, it was like... Um, is it is during a time where I just I was growing up and learning to be myself. This was during a time where some people that I know in my life weren't in my life anymore, and yeah. it was just like you know taking these photos were a nice like um, they, they were therapeutical in a way. Yeah, it's very very, it's very therapeutic, right? Yeah. So that's that's the thing. So you discovered something about yourself that most people take a lifetime to discover, right? Oh, I want to do this. I, I, I'm, I think if I take some photographs, this kind of calms me down and makes me, gets me whole, gets me back to center, makes me the guy that I am, right? And a lot of people go through life doing things they hate, right? My parents always used to say that to me, like people get up every morning and they, they do stuff that they hate to do, you know? He goes, you get up in the morning and if you find something you get to do, there's a huge difference between have to and get to. So if you have to do something, it's like eating vegetables. Your parents used to make you eat vegetables. Oh, I have to eat these. But if you get to do it, it's always different, right? Because you're feeling like that's something that you really, truly are involved in doing, and it's your passion. And that's why, you know, I think this, this conversation we're having, Alan, is really kind of cool. Um, we talked about the role that friends play in your high school experience. You said that early on they were, you had some, and then they kind of went apart. Um, do you see yourself maybe mentoring anybody in the next phase of your life, meaning the next career you have? Do you see yourself maybe mentoring someone else who might have the similar interests as you? Honestly, I feel like I, I could. Um, I feel like some people that can share a similar passion, uh, whether less experienced or similarly experienced, as long as you guys have the same... Um, interest you could both teach each other maybe mm. I'm not just mentoring them but they're also mentoring me in a way yeah well it's funny you said that because you know again I go back to coaching and teaching they're kind of synonymous and my first coaching job was at Marblehead High School in 1996 I was a freshman boys basketball coach oh. and I didn't really you know I love basketball but I didn't know much about it and I had to learn as I went and as I learned and went and got around like-minded people, I was able to kind of take some things from each person. And then it kind of obviously culminated into where I am today as a coach and a teacher because they're synonymous with each other. So it's always good to get something that you really love and kind of just follow that passion, which you're doing, which I love that too. Um, if you had a, uh, no, uh, money's no object. If you had the time, um, what, where would you go on a dream vacation? What would your dream vacation look like? I would honestly love to travel around Europe and Asia. Like, I would love to do that. Uh, going along with my, uh, my hobby of photography, I would love to go around, um, like, beautiful tourist areas mm -hmm. or just maybe some, some places that ha uh, not many people know about around okay. uh, Asia. Nice. Um, I like Europe. that. I like you know, that. Try foods. <laughs> you got to try part. foods. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, that's a big thing. You I mean, know, indulge myself into other cultures. Too. Yes. It's yes. Like learn about people. Well, it's funny you said that because, you know, history is a big thing. I teach that. And, you know, we, we're always talking about different cultures and, and different things that they do and their traditions and whatnot. And I think what's important is if we are open ourselves up and we are able to see what other cultures go through and what they what their traditions are, I think we can appreciate ours and theirs more more readily. And I think... We need to do that as a society. We haven't, we're not really doing that. As an educator, I really see both lenses and I'm able to do that, you know, and I hope that some folks can, can actually come to that realization where they're not really looking down on different traditions from other, you know, type of societies and things like that. Um, now, this is one of my favorite questions and I ask this 
Uh, I asked this of Maverick last week. If you could have dinner or lunch with anybody in history, dead or alive, who would it be and why? It would have to be someone definitely in my family tree. Um, how everything came to be, because as I said before, both my parents are from Asia. Mm -hmm. They're both immigrants. Mm -hmm. I want to know how life was like for them and how everything really came to be, how, like, you know, what, what paths did they take to really raise the people that are uh, older than me now, my grandparents, how they came to be. So what's interesting is the, the footprints that were left on your parents, they left them on you. And you came to this country and now as coming over here and now realizing, hey, listen, I have a responsibility to carry these forward and do some good in my life and do some things and, and, and figure out what career I want to do and how I want to leave a footprint on the world, right? I mean, that's kind of where it's at. I mean, for me, um, it's three. So I have, my first would be my dad. He passed away five years ago. But I would like to go back when, I, when he was young. And I would like to ask him, like, what was it like growing up in, in Florida? Because my dad grew up in Lake Wales, Florida. Um, but what was it like doing that and then going to another country and then coming back here? What, what, what was what would that? Why why is that significant? Why why what made you do that? I would want to know that. Um, Kobe Bryant would be my second one. I actually met Kobe Bryant twice in my life. Very very fortunate, working for the Celtics. Another shameless plug, but um, um, so you know, Kobe Bryant I met in 2008 when the Celtics won the title. My first year coaching, and he was very gracious. And I met him again in 2010 when the Celtics lost the title. But I would ask Kobe Bryant, as a 17-year-old kid, what made you think that you could come into a men's league and do what you did? I would want to know that from him. Like, what, is, what drove you to think that you can really do that? I mean, confidence is key, but, but you're coming into a men's league. And by the way, when you first got here, you didn't really do well. You, you failed a bunch. But failure is really success turned inside out. So I would want to know from him, basically, why. And then my third one would be Martin Luther King, only because I grew up in a time where Martin Luther King was alive when he got assassinated. I was alive when he was, got assassinated, excuse me. So I was born in 1962. He was assassinated in 1968. So I was six. So he had a profound influence on my life. Um, and I would just ask him if I had dinner or lunch with him, I'd ask him, why nonviolent? Why do you think that that would work? I would want, want to know that from him. Why do you think that would galvanize the people of all nations and colors? Why do you think that would that work? And to be honest, here we are 40 plus years later, we have a holiday, his birthday, right? And you know, that's, that's significant. And everybody in history knows who he is. So that's the footprint he left on the world, right? But I would want to know from him why, why that would be the, be the thing that would you know, kind of, kind of galvanize us. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> so I'll tell you one thing. This has been such an enlightening conversation. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'll tell you, Alan, much success to you. I'm going to miss you in the hallways for sure. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, as these guys all graduate from, from high school, it's, it's another step in your journey in life. And hopefully myself and the teachers and educators at BHS have prepared you for what's next. Cause that's always like, kind of like a, oh my gosh, I didn't know that was, that was gonna happen. What's next, right? Some yeah, people kind of get caught off guard and uh, we want you to be a well-informed, educated student coming out of BHS. And I hope that uh, that is my wish for you and you carry upon those footprints that have been implanted on you and move those forward as well, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It's uh, been a nice, nice time with my guy, Alan Dang. Uh, again, um, my name is Mr. Davis. I'm an educator at BHS. Don't forget to check us out on Channel 22. It'll also be posted on SoundCloud. And I leave you with this. What footprint do you want to leave on the world? Have a good day. We'll see you next time.